This is a just a drag tire 101. Uh, so I have three different tires here. Uh, these are the ones I'm currently running. Uh, they are also the narrowest out of all of these. Uh, so this is on the DR10, I mean. Uh, these are off the drag slash. Uh, these are new ones that I'm gonna start experimenting with. So these are the Proline Reactions, uh, Hoosiers, and the Mickey Thompsons. Now the Mickey Thompsons, I'll be honest, this is these are really nice. This is probably the only thing the drag slash has going on for it, uh, to be honest. Well, and that cool body. But uh, these are actually very nice, despite them being so thin. Uh, let's see if the camera picks it up. So they, they are pretty narrow. Uh, they don't look as narrow in the camera as they do in person. Uh, here they are with the Mickeys. I think the Mickeys are slightly, no, not really. The contact patch is about the same. Oh, they are a little wider. A little wider, but let's see, not much. Uh, so I'm just measuring the contact patch. Actually, that's still, it's about three millimeters. That's still quite a bit. So these are about three millimeters wider than these. And, uh, well, here, this is the easiest way to go about. So I'm just, just measuring the contact patch. Now I'm gonna do this on purpose this way. This is about 51. So 51 millimeters. This is 48. And again, I'm just measuring what would actually be in contact. Uh, this would be 49. So 49 millimeters for the Hoosiers. Uh, now these, these are really nice. These are actually very similar to the Mickey Thompson's. The Mickey Thompson's are just a little softer. These are harder, but that's because these are belted. So these are belted tires right here. So you can see the belts. So with these, you have to really be careful uh, when you say balloon them. And yes, these will balloon a little. What ends up happening is they sort of do that. Uh, not as much as the non-belted, so these and these. Uh, but the problem is, so when you look at these compared to these, these will actually get pretty big, big. They'll stretch out. These will not unless you tear the belts and you can destroy these belts by say, just pulling the throttle going full speed without the vehicle being on the road. Uh, these are also limited to, I don't remember if it's 80 miles per hour. Uh, I believe it's about 80 miles per hour. Uh, now, something like this that's on belted, uh, now why would you want one or the other? Uh, the belted tires are gonna be generally more predictable, more stable, because they're not ballooning. Uh, so if the vehicle's shifting weight side to side, these are not really going to be affected that much. These, these sort of act as another gear, as a, another gear in the transmission, if you think about it, but it's, it's not a gear. What I mean by that is you start off with a certain radius, and then as soon as they balloon, right, this pops up, just like this. So when it does that, it increases the radius. So now your radius is actually larger, so you're, that's gonna change your circumference, which means that per revolution, you're actually traveling, uh, you're traveling a farther distance. Therefore, you're going faster for the same revolutions. So it's gonna be up to you. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm trying these out. I decided to try the belted. Uh, I haven't finished gluing these, but before I, I did, I figured I'd do a little comparison, just little thoughts. Uh, these are actually a brand new set. I decided to pick up another set because these things are actually awesome. Uh, I do like these Mickey Thompson, but uh, there's a few little things. Uh, some people don't run foams. You don't have to run foams and that's fine. And I understand some of the principle behind not running foams. It would be like letting the air out out of your car tires. The only thing is 
Keep in mind, RC cars and real cars, they're not proportional. It's not a one-to-one. -one. Just because you're driving a 110 scale RC doesn't mean that all of the forces are gonna be 110 scale. Remember, with a uh, force, it's mass times acceleration. Acceleration, there's a square in there, right? It's meters per second square. So you're dividing by a square. So that actually changes everything. Uh, and that's very important. The other thing too is on a vehicle, uh, the diameter of the inner, sorry, inner and outer part of the wheel is the same. It's not with these because these are based on short course. So when you sit the vehicle, right? Part of letting the air out is when you sit the vehicle. Here, let me do it to the front. When you sit the vehicle, that's what you're doing. So you're getting a greater contact patch. Now, this is not giving you more friction. Uh, that there's a misconception, and I'll talk about that later. So, but you're having a greater contact patch. Well, sorry, I don't. I didn't mean more friction, more force of friction. I'll cover that later. Uh, so you're getting more contact patch. Here's the thing, though. So notice how this, right? First of all, your car has to be heavy enough to compress the tire the way this I'm compressing it right now. That's number one. Most RC cars, they're not gonna be that heavy. You probably don't want them to be that heavy. Now, look at the inner part. This is harder to compress right here because you have less sidewall. So that means that the tire is actually not gonna compress evenly inside to outside, uh, right? So your, your vehicle is actually gonna end up riding on the inner part of the tire just because of the forces. Why? Because this is going to apply more resistance than the outer part. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, really quick, a lot of people think, well, you'll have uh, greater force of friction. Now, notice the words that I'm picking, force of friction, if you go with the wider tires. Uh, not quite. The only reason why you would have, say, greater force of friction is because maybe the wheels and tires are heavier. So remember, force of friction is gonna depend on the coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction is gonna depend on the material. So let's assume the material is the same. Let's assume the coefficient is the same. I mean, it's not, but let's assume it's the same rubber same coefficient. You multiply that times the force, which is the weight of the vehicle. Let's assume they're the same weight. It's the exact same. So the only reason why you would go say, with a wider tire, assuming everything else is equal, right? Let's assume they're the same weight, it's the same compound, everything's equal in this mysteriously perfect world. Uh, you're actually not increasing the force of friction. What you're increasing is the amount of material that can contact and grab onto the surface. There's a certain amount of force, rotational force or tractional force that this compound can take per, say, square centimeter, square millimeter, whatever unit you wanna use, which means that when you add more of those, there's more little patches to grab onto. Uh, think about it as a cat climbing a tree, right? Put a mitten on two paws and see how the cat does, right? It's still the same weight or uh, any, anyway, uh, Think about it that way. So what's going on is that you're actually adding more material so that you're dividing up the force. So it's still the same amount of force of the car, the same amount of weight, and it's still the same amount of power being applied to the tires. What's happening is that you're now dividing up that rotational force that's being applied, right? That torque that's being applied from the tires to the pavement. Well, the torque's being applied to the wheels, and then this is applying it to the pavement you're just dividing it amongst a larger surface area, which means that every square centimeter of this tire has to handle less force. So it's gonna be easier for this thing to grip. That's the reason why. Uh, all right, so moving on to these. Now, uh, like I said, I haven't put the foams on here, mainly because I'm gonna do some demonstrations right now. So now foams, inserts. Uh, here's a big problem, or here's a problem that I see. This is the way, actually, this is the stock one. This is how these come stock. So these come pre-glued on the slash, so drag slash. And some of the pre-glued come the same way. Now you probably can't notice it yet, but watch once I place the ruler, you probably noticed it earlier on. 
Uh, here, let's see. All right. You see the contact patch, how small that is? Notice. So here in reality, our contact patch, I'm going to try to put it the 10 right here on the center line. Uh, the contact patch is just over two centimeters. We're probably looking at about 24 millimeters, 24 millimeters out of 51. So your contact patch is only about half. So one of the things that I recommend doing, which is I've already done it to this one, and I want to show you, and I actually did it to this. Uh, actually, I took the foam out of this one because I haven't prepped the foam. Uh, now notice this one. If we do the same thing, notice the difference in the contact patch. Now our contact patch, let me go to the 10. Contact patch, let's see we're going. Uh, that's quite a bit, that's 50, hold on. Uh, oh my God, I don't know why I was thinking 27, 17, so 34. So we added a whole centimeter over a centimeter on just contact. And the only thing, let me put them next to each other, maybe the camera will pick it up. This one's flatter, this one's rounder, this is stock. The only thing that I did is I cut a rib off of the foam. So I took the foam and then I just cut a rib off. So what happens is these foams are actually quite wide. Now you could use buggy foams, that's fine, that works. Uh, these are the Traxxas foams. The Traxxas foams are fine, uh, but they're too wide. So if you look at the contact patch versus the foam, the foam is actually wider than the contact patch. Now, yes, it keeps rounding. Now, it does give you that cool, you know, balloon out look, but what it also does is the tire is trying to hold the foam together. So it's doing this, All right? You can't really see. Here we go. So it's ballooning the center out which means that your contact patch is now smaller. And uh, all I did was, well, all I do, if, if I get pre-mounted like these, I actually really like these, uh, is I just take a blade and then I lightly score the rubber all alongside. And then after that, I just push it in and then I just slide the blade and then I just end up trimming the tire. Once I do that, since these are not belted, you can actually flip them inside out. The belted ones, you wouldn't be able to do this, not without damaging the belts. Notice that's the rib that I removed. So I just removed one rib and that was it. And that makes all the difference. Because uh, there's no point in buying such wide tires if your contact patch is still gonna be quite small. Now I do have to cut this foam and I have to cut this other one and do the same thing. But now let me show you this one. So this one already has the smaller foam. Again, notice the contact patch. Actually, this is huge, uh, massive difference. All right, so here we have about 41. So our contact patch is about 41 out of the 48, Whoa, oh, that's almost the whole tire uh, on these. Now, if I were to get the, if I were to use this complete foam without cutting the rib out, this is, I should have done this before. Actually, I should have started with this one with the foam in because it's easier to put the foams on the non-belted than the belted. So I'm just gonna do a quick little job, not too detailed, keep that in mind for this, just the sake of time. All right. And, there we go. Right. Okay, 
So there are some of the differences. And the main difference here, I'll line them up together so it's the inner outer part. The main difference in the camera, I don't think can catch it, is here. You get this rounded spot right here at the end. And if we do the same thing, I'm actually gonna start back here. Now we're, we're at about 35 contact patch, about 35. Uh, I think I had said 41 on the other one. So we lost about six millimeters of contact just because of the rib. So again, uh, that's something that gets neglected that uh, you should pay attention to, or at least consider. Now, these tires originally come with these foams. These are open cell. These things eventually, they, they break down really, really fast. Uh, they really do. And then after that, they don't really support anything. So going back to no foam inserts, if it works for you, then don't run foam inserts, that's fine. If these work for you, then don't run them. Why do I like these? Uh, the reason why is because it applies pressure from the wheel onto the tire, onto the contact patch right here in the middle. Why? Because this side and this side do not contact the same because of the different sidewalls. So that's why I run the foam so that it provides a little bit of pressure. You know, this pushes down here in the middle to give me traction. That's the reason why. Now, if you balloon these, you will tear them. These don't tear as easily, but then again, they break down a lot faster. I just stretch the, I just stretch the, all right, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna use them. I'm actually just gonna throw these away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these things. I mean, they'll stretch more, but see, these, uh, you can, you can tear them. I've actually torn some of these before on my short course, you know, same style. Uh, so, uh, things to take away, uh, getting wider tires, uh, doesn't give you a better coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction has to do with the material and the surface. So it's the two surfaces that are coming into contact. Uh, the other thing too is the weight of the wheel isn't really that much to really improve friction because frictional force has to do with the coefficient times the force. The force happens to be the weight of the vehicle. So that's not changing significantly. Uh, the other thing too is what gives you the better traction with the bigger wheels is the longer, the larger contact patch because each cubic, sorry, not cubic, every square centimeter that is in contact with the surface now has less force to deal with, right? When rotating this way, there's less force so the rubber can actually grip and handle. The analogy that I used was the cat, right? Cat wants to climb or hold on to something. Don't, don't do this to cats, but let's just say you're dragging a cat by its tail. Don't do it, you know, cats are nice. Uh, you know, how's the cat gonna hold on better? All four claws or paws, claws out, or mitts on one or two paws, and then you're doing the same thing. Think about it that way, right? The cat weighs the same. Uh, so if all the force is there, it's still the same amount of friction. Uh, it would be like your car running on all four tires versus just the side two. Those side two are going to m meet their limit of force. So they're gonna start sliding. Rubber's gonna give out, uh, but that is it. Now, how do I cut this? I actually just use scissors. So I make a small little hole and then I just cut through it. That's it. That's all I do. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Now, again, these are really nice. They're just kind of narrow. Uh, these I've actually found that are way better. Uh, like I said, and, and it, it's just the, the drag slash ones. That's it. So this one I have to cut, uh, this I have to mount, and then this I have to cut. Now, really quick. Now, usually I do this a lot slower, but, uh, make sure that you have a sharp knife because if you don't, and try to do it on a steady, uh, surface, I'm doing it here because of the camera. Uh, but all you're doing is you're just lightly cutting. Man, this is taking me too long. I usually do this a lot faster. I'm gonna blame the camera because I have to keep an eye on the camera. See, yeah, don't, don't do that. But 
you're just following the bead. Yeah, keep, okay. See, uh, again, make sure that you can focus completely. It's like I'm doing everything I'm telling you not to do. And the reason why you wanna make sure you use a nice sharp blade is you'll apply less force in order to cut. So there's a lower chance the blade is gonna slip off and then cut something you don't want, like your finger, right? Uh, actually don't wanna finish this, well, I'm almost there. Now I'm being stubborn. And that's it. All right, so once you've scored everything, now you're just going to pull and you're just gonna come in And now you're gonna find that rib on the wheel. And that's it. You just pull, and then you just follow. And you just follow, that's it. I guess I'll just finish this. I keep going back and forth between, I wanna make sure I'm on camera, because I have a habit of forgetting that there's a camera and then just doing the work. Yeah, I can do it here. It looks better if I'm closer to the camera. I actually bought these as takeoffs. Uh, that's the reason why. Got them for a good price. If not, then I would have just glued my own. Mainly because sometimes factory glue jobs aren't the best. All right, so that did most of it. Now you can just go in, just sort of clean it, trim, trim the rest. I actually missed quite a bit. That's what happens when you're looking at the camera. All right, well, almost finished. See, now it's just a very thin layer, so it's very easy. And uh, the thing too, to keep in mind is the following. Uh, CA glue glues rubber like you wouldn't believe. Uh, let's just say you tore a wheel, sorry, not a wheel, a uh, tire, you tore a tire and then you glued that tire. If that tire were to tear again, it would not tear uh, where the glue uh, bonded it. It would actually tear on another rubber surface part. Uh, you can try this with rubber tubing. So if you have rubber tubing, cut it. Well, break it first. And then after you break it, glue it again, and then break it again. You're gonna notice it's not gonna break where you glued it. It's gonna break on another section, uh, but that's it. And then because you're, you're keeping this glued, all those imperfections are gonna match these imperfections. So you're gonna end up with a very nice uh, re-glued tire once you're finished with the tire, but that's it. Like I said, non-belted, you can flip them inside out. Belted, you cannot. And here is the inside, non-belted. You get this little honeycomb to reinforce it, or else these things would balloon, balloon even more versus the belts. So I hope this video was useful and informative. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. Maybe I can make a follow-up video in the future. Uh, if you have any suggestions, tips and tricks, please post them as well. If you like running with open cell foams, you know, please let us know why, uh, what, are, what is your experience? Or if you prefer no foams, tell us what your experience is. Uh, and then the other important thing is when you're re-gluing, it's all about prepping. Uh, you can use some dish soap, Dawn works, uh, wash everything, rubbing alcohol, just basic, uh, dry everything clean and then use CA glue. Usually I use, uh, J Concepts glue, which I really like, or AKA, they're probably made by the same company. Actually, all CA glues are probably made by the same. 
Uh, but I'm trying uh, much more just because I was desperate for glue and this is the only thing I found. Uh, it actually works pretty good. I actually like this. And it comes with this slightly different cap, which saves the glue a little longer. The other glues eventually will start chilling up after maybe about a month. Uh, so CA glue, just about every month you're gonna have to buy glue. Um, but that is it. So foams, I do like closed cell. Uh, I've been using blue. Uh, there's black, there's red, it just depends on the stiffness, but blue works just fine. Uh, now, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,